Joining us live is the Shadow Finance Minister, Jane Hume. Jane, good to see you, as always. So, a forward look at the Fair Work Commission decision. It's, uh, it's in a few hours' time from now. But 2.6 million Australians stand to get a pay rise today. Where do you hope the Commission lands here? Well, the decision of the Fair Work Commission is, is an independent one and I'm sure the Fair Work Commission will take into account all the economic factors that are surrounding uh, the economy right now, uh, in particular that persistent inflation. Core inflation still remains at around 4.1%. And as Michelle Bullock has pointed out, it is a homegrown problem. Prices have risen around 5% in the last 12 months. Around 4% of that is domestic factors rather than the, the 1%, which is international factors. And in fact, Australia has one of the highest persistent rates of inflation in the developed world. That's got to come into the Fair Work Decisions thinking. And it's certainly something that we're going to be talking about at Senate Estimates today when we have the Treasury of the Secretary appearing. That difference okay. between uh, the government's inflation forecasts and the RBA's inflation Yeah, forecasts. I'll ask you about Stephen Kennedy in a moment, but just one more on the Fair Work Commission. I know it's independent and all that, but business wants 2%. Union wants 5%. That's well above inflation. At what point do you believe this becomes a problem and it becomes inflationary? Well, certainly if the fair work decision comes down at a rate that is higher than inflation, inevitably, you know, logically, it would push inflation up even further. That would be the worst thing for Australians because, we you know, while we all mm. want more purchasing power, we all want more money in our pockets, uh, if it's going to push up inflation, well, that will simply erode purchasing yeah. power, power I guess in the, the contradiction in the long term here, for everybody. The contradiction here, Jane, though, is that if it's not higher than inflation, then wages are going backwards. Well, no, they would be real wages would be steady. And of course, we all want real wage rises, but the best way to get real wage rises is to bring inflation down, to do everything that to bring inflation down. Our concern, of course, is that this budget was in fact expansionary. That's certainly what economists were saying, which is pushing inflation even further. And that's the wrong priorities by, by this government. The wrong decisions are being taken. We want to see inflation come back down and hopefully the Fair Work decision today will reflect those priorities. OK, on to Stephen Kennedy. Uh, you just brought him up. He's fronting up to Senate estimates this morning. What do you want to get him on? How, how key will his inflation forecasts be, considering he said just last week that higher prices remain on the horizon? Yes, that's right. And, of course, as I said... Those inflation forecasts in the budget were different to the ones that the RBA put out just six days earlier. We want to understand why there is a difference in those two inflation forecasts, what it is in the budget that's actually going to bring inflation back down, because certainly those first inflation figures that came out just last week were very disappointing, I think, for all Australians that are looking for a little bit of relief, because we know that they're doing it tough right now. And unless inflation comes back down, unless there is a concerted effort by government to prioritise bringing inflation back down, well, then all Australians are going to pay a price. Interest rates will simply be higher for longer because the Reserve Bank won't be able to take its foot off the brake uh, in order to, uh, you know, to give Australians some relief. Got to ask you about the former Treasurer, Jane, uh, with potential boundary changes in Victoria as a senior female in the Liberal Party, especially in Victoria. How do you feel about Josh Frydenberg potentially rerunning for the seat of Kooyong? Well, I have to admit, I was disappointed to see these boundary change, draft boundary changes generally. I mean, uh, you know, they are abolishing a seat that is that has an incumbent woman uh, and also a challenger woman. And that's a that's a real that's a real shame. I think, you know, I think the party is going to fight hard to keep the seat of Higgins. It's a really important seat. It's been a seat of prime ministers in the past. And Katie Allen, who was our candidate there, who is our candidate there, I should say, uh, is you know an extraordinarily capable professional woman with great experience, and we should want to keep her there. So that should be the party's priority right now: is fighting to the, keep the seat of Higgins. OK, but has Josh Frydenberg got a better chance than Amelia Harmer to, to take Kuyong? Uh, I, I, look, I've heard these rumours. I haven't spoken to Josh myself. I think that there might be some, you know, Josh Frydenberg fans that got a little bit of a rush of blood to the head when they saw these boundary changes. But, you know, quite frankly, our focus as a party should be on keeping Higgins 
right now. We have some extraordinary female candidates. People like Katie Allen, people like Amelia Hamer, Giselle Capterian in North Sydney, Maggie Forrest in Ryan, uh, Susie Bauer in Lyons. These extraordinary women, these okay. professional women, uh, we know are going to be the future of right. the Liberal Party. But we it, should be doing everything that we yeah, can. Yeah, I mean, but, but if Josh Brydenberg, if, if he comes back, and, and I know he, he's probably uh, more likely to not run than likely, but if he does come back, then Amelia would have to step aside, would she not? Which, which would be a problem for the female quota. So Josh Frydenberg is well loved in our party and we all you know hold him in you know reverence for being the treasurer that brought us through covid you could only imagine what it would have been like if there were a labor government during that period of time we would still be paying an enormous price for that Josh has always been a great supporter of women he helped me yeah. he's helped people like Sarah Henderson Jess Wilson in Victoria and he's campaigning along uh, alongside uh, both Katie Allen and Amelia Hamer right now. He knows yeah. how important it is to have great women in Parliament too. OK, so who would you prefer to run for Koo Yong? Josh Frydenberg or Amelia <laughs> Hamer? Well, the party has already pre-selected Amelia Hamer. But, Amelia but they could pre-select again though, right? A young woman. Well, why would they open the pre-selections based on draft boundaries alone? You know, okay. draft boundaries change all the time. They have done in the past. It would be a crazy thing to do. Uh, we look, I know that there's lots of people out there that would love to see Josh's return, but Josh is a great supporter of women in Parliament, always has been, and I know he's doing right by Amelia Hamer. He's campaigning alongside her right now. OK. Jane Hume, appreciate it. Talk to you soon.